Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we are going to look into Azure App Service. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your trainer for this AZ303 certification course. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So let us look into Azure App Service plans. In Azure App Service, an app runs in an App Service plan. An app service plan defines a set of compute resources for a web app to run. These compute resources are analogous to the server farm in conventional web hosting. One or more apps can be configured to run on the same computing resources. When you create an app service plan in a certain region, for example, West Europe, a set of compute resources is created for that plan in that region. So whatever apps you put into this app service plan runs on these compute resources as defined by your app services plan. And each app service plan defines a region, a number of virtual machine instances, and size of virtual machine instances. Now let's look into app service plan tiers. The pricing tier of an Azure app service plan determines what app service features you get to and how much you pay for the plan. There are few categories. The first couple are the free and the shared plan. The free and the shared services plans are base tiers that run on the same Azure VMs as other apps. Some apps may belong to other customers, and these tiers are intended to be used only for the development and testing purposes. And there is no SLA provided for free and shared service plans and free and shared plans are metered on a per app basis. Then there is a basic plan. The basic service plan is designed for apps that have lower traffic requirements and don't need advanced auto scale and traffic management features. The pricing is based on the size and number of instances you run. Built-in network load balancing support automatically distributes traffic across these instances. The next tier is standard tier. The standard service plan is designed for running production workloads and the pricing is based on the size and number of instances you run. The next one is premium. The premium service plan is designed to provide enhanced performance for production apps. The upgraded premium plan, which is premium version two features, DV2 series VMs with faster processors, SSD storage, and double memory to core ratio compared to the standard one. And the last one is isolated. The isolated service plan is designed to run mission critical workloads that are required to run in a virtual network. The isolated plan allows customers to run their apps in a private, dedicated environment in an Azure data center using DV2 series VMs with faster processors, SSD storage, and double the memory to core ratio compared to standard. When you provision an app service plan, there are two workloads for app service scaling, scale up and scale out. And apps can be scaled manually or automatically. So what is scale up? So with using scale up, you can get more CPU, memory, disk space, and extra features like dedicated virtual machines, custom domains and certificates, staging slots, auto scaling and more. And you scale up by changing the pricing tier of the app service plan that your app belongs to. So what is scale out? Scale out increases the number of virtual machine instances that you run your app. You can scale out to as many as 30 instances, depending on your pricing tier. App service environments in isolated tier further increases your scale out counts to 100 instances. The scale instance count can be configured manually or automatically. Auto scale is based on predefined rules and schedules. Now let me show you how you can create an app service plan. I'm on my Azure portal. On the global search box, this time search for app service plans and select app service plans. As you can see that I don't have any app service plan, I'm going to click on create app service plan. First, select your existing subscription or the subscription you want to host this app service plan. Create or select an existing resource group. Give a name for your app service plan and select the type of the operating system. You can choose between Linux or Windows and pick a region where you want to host this. I'm going to keep it as Central US. 
under the pricing tier by default i have something selected over here which which gives me a total of 100 acu and uh, close to 2 gb of memory you can change the size of the plan i'm going to click on change size this is where you would be able to pick either it is a dev test environment production or you're looking for an isolated environment the options which you see which will be totally related to the subscription type what you have I'm going to pick a production environment and this time I'm going to go with S1. Click on apply, click on review and create to complete the process of creating an app service plan. The next thing we need to understand is how to configure the networking for your app service. The VNet integration feature is used in multi-tenant apps. If the apps are in app service environment, then it's already in a VNet and doesn't require to use VNet integration feature to reach resources in the same VNet. There are two variations for the VNet integration, regional VNet integration and gateway required VNet integration. So what is regional VNet integration? When you connect to Azure Resource Manager virtual networks in the same region, you must have a dedicated subnet in the VNet you are integrating with. The next one is gateway required VNet integration. When you connect to the VNet in the other region, or to a classic virtual network in the same region, you need an Azure Virtual Network Gateway provision in the target VNet. Now let's understand what are deployment slots. Within a single Azure App Service web app, you can create multiple deployment slots. And each slot is a separate instance of that web app. And it has a separate host name. And you can deploy a different version of your web app into each slot. And deployment slots are available only when your web app uses the app service plan in the standard, premium, or isolated tier. This table shows the maximum number of slots you can create within each tier. Now let's understand what are Azure Functions. Azure Functions allow you to run small pieces of code called functions without worrying about application infrastructure. With Azure Functions, the cloud infrastructure provides all the up-to-date servers you need to keep your application running at scale. A function is triggered by a specific type of event. So what are the features of Azure Functions? You can use Azure Functions for serverless applications. You have choice of language. You can use C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Python, or PowerShell. You only pay per use pricing model. And then you can bring your own dependencies. You get integrated security and simplified integration. Another topic to understand within Azure App Service is Logic App. Now let us look into Azure Logic Apps. Azure Logic App is a cloud service that helps you schedule, automate, and orchestrate tasks, business processes, and workflows when you need to integrate app data systems and services across enterprise or organizations. Logic App simplifies how you design and build scalable solution for app integration, data integration, system integration, enterprise application integration, and B2B communication, whether it is in the cloud, on-premises, or both. So how does Logic App work? Every Logic App workflow starts with a trigger, which fires when a specific event happens, or when new available data meets a specific criteria. Many triggers provided by the connectors in Logic App include basic scheduling capabilities so that you can set up how regularly your workload run. Each time that the trigger fires, the Logic App's engine creates a Logic App instance that runs the actions in the workflow. And these actions can also include data conversions and workflow controls. That concludes this lesson. In the next episode, we're going to look into Azure Monitor. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.